Hello humans! The Nintendo Direct dropped today and it was a little bit of a surprise, I must say. I'm probably just gonna leave the trailer playing over and over again in the background while I do this intro and talk a little bit about sort of the story stuff. And then we'll dive a little bit more deeply into dissecting sort of some of the gameplay things we've seen. And I'll try and point out some of the details. So, this game is Fire Emblem Engage. It is unfortunately correct as per the leaks that we have seen from a few months back. I wasn't a huge fan of the leaks. I'll do a quick recap of what they said in those leaks right now. They're saying that this is a brand new story. It's not a remake. It's a collab between Intelligent Systems, Koei Tecmo, and Gust. Gust is the studio that did the Atelier series. And so the visuals might look a little bit different than what we were used to in Three Houses or previous Fire Emblems. It was intended as an anniversary game to celebrate the 30th anniversary, which is why in some of these scenes you are probably seeing some of the old heroes. Because it's the 30th anniversary, they're trying to sort of bring back all of the games that we have loved and played and putting them all in one place. Whether or not that's a good thing, we can talk about that later. Uh, they also said the main lord is uh, has red and blue hair, as we currently saw, and the mother is a dragon, as is said, is mentioned in the trailer that the characters descended from a royal lineage of dragons. So the leak pretty much nailed all of these. I don't know if it was confirmed that Gust and Koei Tecmo worked on this just yet, but every other detail seems to be in line with what has been said. Now, I want to talk about some of the things that are said in the trailer in regards to the story. It says there's four realms and they surround the Holy Land. So we know there are four houses, haha, and a monastery in the middle for lack of a better term. So you want to say this is a Fire Emblem Four Houses, go for it. It actually could be. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but I think it's kind of funny. Um, there was apparently a fell dragon that they all banded together and summoned heroes from the past to defeat. And the heroes of old were summoned and they are called emblems. So I guess these are sort of our fire emblem, if you will, this time around. Now, about a thousand years later, our main character is woken up and they're sensing a resurrection of this old fell dragon. Now, I don't know if this fell dragon is Grima and we are bringing him back or her back as a villain or if it's a totally different type of fell dragon. We see this big purple dragon snake kind of thing and we also see an image of an older adult enemy with longer hair. So it could be an entirely new villain, or it could be Grima. We also see a lot of different characters in these. And I'll go back and start to sort of pause and click through these and try and dissect them slowly. I think I mentioned that we've already been asleep for a thousand years, and we are confirmed to be a member of a dragon royal family of old. And at the very, very end of the trailer, it says that we need to gather all the rings to bring peace. Now, this feels very Lord of the Rings-like, you know get the ring of power and throw it in and destroy all the rings. Well, we need to gather all the rings here and use them. Now, the rings we've seen, and I'm going to pause here because I guess this is at a certain perfect point to pause, seem to be what is used to summon these heroes of past. And let's go through them very quickly. Um, my friends and I dissected this on Mecha's stream. So if you guys want to go more in depth into an hour of discussion of people who had just saw the trailer, you can probably go to Mecha's channel and see it there. But here at the very top, we see Marth, and it's going in chronological order with all the games. So we see Marth, Celica, Sigurd. And there's no three here because Marth is the main character in both one and three. So it's going Fire Emblem 1, 2, 4. Five would be Leaf. Six is Roy. Seven, for some reason, is represented by Lin. I'm going to assume it's because of Hero's waifu uh, popularity, but, you know, there we go. Lin is the seven rep here. Erica for 8, Ike for 9, Micaiah for 10. So 9 and 10 got different reps, even though 1 and 3 didn't, but that's fine. And then we have what looks like Lucina here with her bow, which is an interesting detail considering Lucina used to use the falchion, and that was the marketing that we got for Fire Emblem Awakening when it was coming out. But here we've got Bo Lucina with her mask, you can very clearly see. And this one we debated for a while who it was, but at the end of the day, it is female Corin. And you can see that she's holding a dragon stone here. So it's not Xander. Some people thought it was Xander, but this is actually female Corrin. And then we have very obviously Byleth at the top. So these are all the, the representatives that I think will be in the game. I don't know if we'll get Alm. I don't know if we'll get Selif. I don't know if we'll get Eliwood or Hector or Ephraim or any of the other lords that sort of share the spotlight in these games. But this is just what's available on the wheel. And in the trailer itself, I think we only really see Marth, 
Celica, and Sigurd. So I'm wondering if we're also obtaining these in order of release. It would be very fitting to go along with sort of the celebration of the series as you start by beginning with Marth and you work your way along up the series chronologically. That would be pretty cool, actually. So let's move this along a little bit here. You can see, oh, I skipped past it. This is a map of the four kingdoms. So we can see this here. This looks like an ice area with a little dragon up here and the boat. So I'm assuming this might be the wyvern sort of area with these little dragons here in the boats. We've got a desert area. Looks like there's camels, more boats here. In the middle, this is the Holy Land. Now, I'm surprised that it's surrounded by this darkness. So I'm wondering if this is akin to sort of Breath of the Wild where the dark force takes over the middle area. I don't know. Maybe it could just be a stylistic choice, but this castle over here looks like a pretty evil castle, if I'm just going to sort of point it out from what I can see. And then you have sort of the Holy Land Palace thing here, detached from the rest of these from sea. This looks like a very sort of plainsy area, forest, goats, or whatever these things are, and then another castle. And then the top left one looks very mountainous, so I would assume maybe more flying things here, potentially Pegasus Knights, things of that nature. So it looks like we've got four themed uh, regions and then the Holy Land in the middle. So that could, you know, sort of point to uh, what kind of characters come from each region. Here we move along and we see sort of the Fell Dragon Snake. I'll let this play out a little bit so that you can see them. Yeah, it's got kind of like that cobra face with the wings and then the wheel is rotating for us to see the art. And here we can also see a little bit of a depiction. Here we clearly see on the right side, it's Erica, or at least the art of Erica, stabbing this pinkish warrior. It looks like it's a generic. And there's another one with an ax standing here. You've got a clear image of Lucina, very obvious with the mask and the bow. Marth, Ike, Lynn, and Micaiah. With Sigurd pulling the back. And Sigurd's holding a lance, which is kind of odd. Now I want to pause here, and it's very clear the emphasis on this ring. They also say that the rings are used to summon them, and it's our main character with a sword sort of slaying the dragon. I'm assuming this actually might be Marth, because of what they said previously about sort of binding together and slay the dragon. Unless it was our main character a thousand years ago who did it. Slayed the dragon and then went to sleep while this dragon was sealed. They do mention that the seal is breaking. The sealed enemy is coming back. So the enemy was never killed. They were sealed away, maybe with a sword or a fire emblem or something. And this is the image we're seeing. You've got the pointed ears, the reddish hair, the eye in the middle. Now, I remember that I think one of the dragons had an eye in the middle. Was it like a Nankos or something like that? So this might be a throwback to that. And then you've got sort of the purplish fire. Looks pretty cool. Red eyes, very serious face. Kind of face, kind of looks like Duma, if if you think about it a little bit. And then here we are. This is our main character. We don't have a name, or no, we do have a name. I'll get it in a little bit. But the leaks showed a female main character with very long blue and red hair. So uh, they're showing the main character being male a lot of the time. I'm assuming we'll see the female one later. And this is a white dragon. I'm assuming it's sort of a divine dragon. And this kid, I don't know who it is. And then we get to see a little bit of a fight between both sides. It's just a showcase of characters and animations at this point. We've got what looks like to be a dancer with a little staff here. And then we've got Dimitri 2.0 with a spear on this side. He really does look like Dimitri. He looks like a cross between Dimitri and the Fire Emblem Warriors OC from the very beginning. And then we got a little bit of a fire maid. She's, uh, whoo, it's getting hot in here, guys. And then, yeah, here's the emphasis on the ring and where we summon Marth. So you can see that you gather the rings and you summon the heroes of old. They did say gather all the rings. I can't remember if they said there were 12 rings, but there were 12 people on that sort of round thing. And then here we have the title, which is Fire Emblem Engage. I don't know how I feel about this title. It's got a ring. They're wearing it on the left hand on the ring finger and they're calling it Engage. Like, are we getting married or something? I'm already married to Fire Emblem. I've been playing it for over 20 years, like, or almost 20 years. This is the longest marriage ever. Yeah, here we go. We're waking up. We've got some of the new characters. I'm a little bit thrown off by the way the eyes look. I don't know if anyone else is, but the eyes kind of look weird to me. They, they're a little bit hexagonal. A little bit too big. Just a minor detail. These ones are a little bit better. But I do not like the main character design. Like, 
red hair with a red eye on the other side, blue hair with a blue eye on the other side, and the costumes is kind of all over the place. I'm not a huge fan of the design. But I want to talk about this, which is the map. These maps look different to anything I've ever seen. They look like a little bit of a fusion between sort of the 3DS style with a little bit of the Heroes style and a little bit of the Three Houses style. It's not quite the background of Three Houses. It looks prettier than Three Houses does. The little structures look nicer than they do in Three Houses. The sprites, I think, look kind of similar, but it's also not quite there. And the weapon icons, I was having a chat with some of my friends over Discord, and I initially had a knee-jerk reaction that these are just the hero's assets were used. They're not. They look very similar, but they're not. They're color-coded in a similar way as well, but they're not just completely reused. They're pointing upwards instead of sideways, and these are sort of uh, diamond-shaped, so they're not. And we also see a little bit of the display here at the bottom, and you can see sort of HP, and it goes down to 18 because the enemy is doing 6 damage, and you can see the 6 damage is here. For some reason, they don't have the times two here. They're just opting to give you that the damage is 20, and it shows you that you're doing 10, you're taking six, and then you're doing another bit of 10 here at the bottom. Sorry, the bar is getting away in the way down here. But otherwise, you have your damage, you have your hit rate, you have your crit rate. I don't know why they wouldn't just do 10 times two. That, it's just much cleaner. It's what we're used to as Fire Emblem fans, and I would like to see that instead. But, I mean, I guess we just have to get you to the new, used to the new UI. We also have the L and R alteration between the weapons, as you can clearly see here. And we have Alir, which is our main character name. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what is said here. And Corrupted is the name of the enemy. And that implies that I guess we have some sort of zombification of the enemy units, which we did kind of see in one of the scenes previously here. Let me see if I can back up to it at all. Uh, I'm not finding it immediately, but it had some of the axe people with... Uh, yeah, here they are. They look kind of like they're red hues and the, the armor is kind of ripped up and destroyed. So, I mean, I guess that makes sense for them being corrupted. We also have this slide here, which is a representation when you highlight your ally and you can see, clearly see the class, which is Dragon Child slash Dragon. Spoiler alert, I guess they told us already. We have the level, which says level four. We have the inventory, which has a sword and this is a vulnerary and then two open slots. We have the movement, which is four movement. Base movement is four is very important to know. And here on all the way on the right hand side, for some reason they have the skills displayed, which is weird. I would think you would put skills skills here on the on the left side, along with your, your sort of general display, the weapon and the the inventory. But it is what it is. HP is massive in the in the middle. What I like what they did is they've specified that this is physical attack. So you've got sort of your raw physical attack, your speed your hit, your avoid, your defense, and your resistance. So it's really very simple. It's kind of clean to have it on the bottom. It does remind me a lot of 3DS Fire Emblem. And then you've got your mini map here, which I'm guessing these light tiles are sort of the traversal tiles. The, the yellow, I'm not sure of. It looks like they're villages. This square here looks like it's corresponding to this house here. So I'm assuming this is a village. I want to say this is a fortress tile, and I'm not sure if standing in front of it is what gives you the protection. Like this person standing here, this looks like an ally unit, or if standing next to it gives you the protection. It's kind of hard to discern. It's a little bit of a darker tile on the minimap here where my mouse is pointing. So I'm not entirely sure. And then the reds, you can obviously tell our enemies. And then there's a solid red, darker red symbol here, which I'm assuming is the boss. Other than that, you've got weapon icons. So this one is tome for magic, blue for lance, another tome for magic although it corresponds with sigurd for some reason so i wonder if there's like a class change kind of mechanic green for axe we see it twice here gray for bow very clear as well and what's interesting is this one so this is a character that seems to have the fists and we know that fists are a playable kind of weapon because you see it later on in the trailer but they also have staves so i mean that's kind of a weird way of depicting that the character has fists and staves unless this is representing healing Oops, I hit play by accident. Let's go back to that. Uh, and it's also a different color. These are different colors. So the weapon triangle is back. Let me point to this again here. And you can clearly see that there's a down arrow for swords and up arrow for lances. So it's swords and axes, axes and lances, and lances beat swords. But I have to wonder what that means for the color coding here. What does the yellow and the green mean? Are they going to have their own color coding? What does the colorless mean? Is magic going to have its own weapon triangle again? 
I think a lot of people are very happy to have the weapon triangle back again, but it, I wonder how they're going to do it. That's all. There's also a little animation when you start combat. I thought that was a really nice detail. You can see that here. Both enemies kind of stand and deliver. And the animations here really remind me of sort of the 3DS Fire Emblem animations. They look similar to Echoes, where you come in dashing and you do your animations. So I feel like that might be recycled. The sprites here also look quite nice. And we can see that Vander, who is our Jagan, I'm assuming, is a paladin class, has a base movement of six. So it looks like the movement's been a little bit reduced. And then speed is going down, and I wonder why that is. Is it a skill debuff from the enemies? Is it the weapon weighing them down? Because later on we're going to see that there is a build stat in this game. So yeah, these are just enemy animations again, and we can see this bow does 27 damage and kills the enemy. I'm assuming they're trying to tell us that bows are still effective and flying types. Here's the fists. And it looks like they're using a scroll, so that kind of reminds me of... Fates? Was it Fates that had sort of the funky weapons? I'm not sure. And then we've got our armor, Louis, using the Iron Lance. Pegasus Knight. This girl is really pretty. She's got sort of the blue hair, green eyes, lipstick. Um, Pegasus girl kind of resembles Fiora. So I'm a fan of Chloe. Slim Lance as well. Usually a reference to... Oh, actually, I just saw something that I didn't think about before, which was the critical hit. Uh, so it's, it shows 42-42 with a slim lance, with a thief using the hammer, and I gotta wonder, ah, so her base damage is 42, she does 126, so criticals are triple damage in this game confirmed. That's good data to have. Here we're looking at the ring again, and it looks like yeah, emblem rings. So there's three pages. I don't know what these three pages are or if they scroll through them, but this page has a lot of things that we can talk about. The first thing you'll notice is that when you're clicking on the emblem ring, all of your stats here on the left-hand side are going up. So it seems like it's similar to the pair-up mechanic from Awakening and Fates. Again, a little bit of a shout-out back to the 3DS era. The second thing we notice, and it was Speedy who pointed this out on the stream, is that there's something here called Bond 6. And what we had discussed and sort of talked about is whether or not this is sort of a support kind of thing, or maybe if it's the level that builds up, and the more that your bond builds up, the more stats you get, the more skills you get, whether or not you'll get a different kind of weapon. We don't know for sure, but it seems that this pair-up mechanic gives you these skills and gives you access to this kind of weapon. And we can clearly see this trailer moves way too quickly, that once you've paired up, you've got this sort of Marth icon on your bottom left hand side and when your character runs he manifests and runs with you now part of me has to wonder if these characters are actually not usable in the overworld i know i we saw them in a previous screenshot and i'll go back to it in a second i just need to remember what time i'm at 203 because this character here is blonde and she has the celica icon so are certain characters limited to certain to our main character so can it only be our main character that uses someone like Marth and Sigurd? Is it only this character that uses Celica? Or can you redistribute the rings as you see fit? And actually, there's an important detail on this fort here. You can see the flying enemies standing on top of it. So these fortress tiles really are traversable, and I'm guessing you can use them to your advantage. Let me just go back to the previous gameplay screenshot that we saw. Can I find it, please? Thank you. Maybe? Yes, here. So, just go back one second. Yeah. So you can see this Lance guy is kind of blondish hair, has Marth. This Tome guy, also blondish hair, has Sigurd. This one, the blonde, has Celica. And then our main character doesn't have a pairing here. So we can definitely swap the rings between our story characters. So that's a good thing. I was a little bit worried that we would have to use these characters in our main party. But it looks like the rings are only equips, which is a good thing. That makes me very happy. Now let's get back to where we were in the trailer, which is here. And we paired with Marth, we moved around, and you can see he manifests as kind of like a ghost. And we're still using the sword, and it says 13, 6, and 13, which is indicating three different attacks. Let's see how this... So 13... Oh, it didn't, it didn't play it out completely. But I'm assuming that this is a follow-up attack that we're getting as a result of equipping Marth as the ring. Unfortunate that we don't get to see the whole attack. And then here we have Alfred equipping the Sigurd ring, Bond 1, and you can see that the stats are lower. He's only getting 1 in dex and 1 in defense, and the previous one that we had was getting 2s. 
He's getting billed here, which is interesting. And Sigurd, for some reason, has the Rider's Bane instead of the Tearfing. I don't know why they did that, but yeah. Okay, here here we only see 19 on the damage calculator, and the enemy has 1 and 1. And it looks like they're attacking at the same time. So I am not really sure how these mechanics are operating, but it'll be definitely something to look out for and try and straighten out. Here we've got sort of the Holy Land, and we see... I'm, what, or what I'm assuming is the middle Holy Land hub because this looks like a monastery or a church and you can see Marth sort of manifesting. So I wonder if all of our heroes will manifest and you'll be able to talk to them, maybe do side quests, maybe find out a little bit more about them. At the top, we see it says Somniel map. So I wonder if the region is called Somniel? Could be. And at the bottom, we see a little mini map of sorts. So this looks like a fishing icon, which is interesting. And then we have an item icon. So I'm assuming this is a vendor uh, shirt icon, so armor. And then you have a hammer icon here, so a smithy maybe, and a weapon icon, so a weapon shop. And it's got these little blue things, meaning that you can talk to people, or maybe they have a little side quest or information or item to give you. Again, this is just a look at the shop. The textures don't look like they've improved very much from Three Houses. I don't know what this is, but it just looks like flat green lettuce. And then we have animals. They said something about, like, this is uh, still very modest and it'll fill out with time, so we've got a cat, what looks like some kind of goat, pigeon, maybe, and I don't know, is this a dog? I'm not entirely sure. And then, yeah, here's our smithy. And we can change our equipment. I don't know if this is limited to our main character or not. This is a blonde character, who I'm assuming is one of the characters you recruit. Actually, it is. She was a screenshot in the leaks. So it looks like you can change the, uh, the shirt or you know, the, the body piece, it says here, body. And this is an accessory, I'm assuming. So it looks like it's customizable. One piece, I'm assuming this is a swimsuit. So for everyone who wants those, rejoice. Here we've got a very cool animation of engage, which I don't really like. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it looks like we're changing into a different form when we do that. And earlier we saw that Marth did not have Mercurius equipped. Now Marth has, or Alir and Marth did not have Mercurius equipped. Now we have it. So I wonder if that is a result of that engage mechanic being at max level and allowing us to sort of change form. You can see we have these wings. We are a dragonkin. So we're wondering whether or not these wings are, are dragon form or if it's a result of us and Marth bonding. And you can see we have a skill active here. And as we engage this enemy, haha, very funny joke. Uh... I missed it right there. Divine Speed and Perceptive are two skills that just procced. And if you remember, if we go back to that screenshot, I'm not going to go back so I don't keep hopping back and forth, but Divine Speed and Perceptive were two of the skills that Marth had when you used his ring. So that's definitely something that comes into play. Let me see if we get the three attacks off here. So it's a, it would be 10 and 21. So 21 and another 21. I don't know what that 10 is. I'm going to have to rely on either you guys in the comments section to let me know what that was, or maybe do some more research and wait for more information to figure that out. But Alfred and Sigurd here coming in with the Rider's Bane. And it looks like the skill momentum has taken us to the other side. And here we have Selene and Selica doing sort of a Ragnarok, warp Ragnarok animation. She moved all the way across the map and absolutely nuked this enemy. So it looks like, I'm gonna pause that there here just to do a little bit of analysis. It looks like uniting with this hero gives you some sort of additional skills, additional stats, an additional weapon effect of sorts that might be what that third number we were seeing down here was before, as well as the different weapon. This looks like the red-haired character we saw earlier, but more of a commander type, and it looks like we're in the winter area. So I'm assuming he's the commander of the forces of the region in the top right corner. Maybe they will be our villains in this. I don't know. That's just a guess from my end. This character looks like she's from the forest area, which was in the bottom left-hand side of that map that we saw originally. So maybe she's a princess of the forest area. She seems to have some wings around her head. I don't know if this means she's a different type of race or if this is just the design because she also has it on her outfit. Here we see a darkened sort of ring being worn by one of our villains. And that makes me wonder if we are able to utilize the hero rings 
does that mean that the villains are able to utilize villain rings? And that would be really cool if we're also getting sort of a, a throwback to some of the villains from the old Fire Emblem stories. I kind of doubt it. I think this might be the main dragon ring that this guy is wearing because he looks obviously different from the dragon that we saw, I'm pretty sure. We don't get to see the face because they don't want to spoil it. I'm assuming it's going to be a very important detail. But the other possibility is that these rings have been corrupted and we need to gather them, liberate them, purify them, and then use them to summon heroes of old. Alternatively, the heroes of old themselves could have been corrupted and are stored inside these rings, and then we just need to purify them. So that is also a possibility. Here we just see two armies crashing against each other. Again, it's in the winter area. Not much to say here. And this is our main character using the ring. Alongside, I can't really see clearly what these are, but this looks like the girl who was using a staff in the trailer. This looks like it might be that redhead guy from earlier, the fire mage and the Dimitri lookalike. So these are probably just our party members. They might be really important. They might be the princes of the four kingdoms, maybe, because there are four of them and us. So I wonder if that's us. And then it's facing off the divine dragon. They're actually a little bit less blurry there at the end. So yeah, I really can't make out the silhouette of this one, but I'm pretty sure about the rest of the three. And then it shows us and Marth opening the door. It kind of looks like the, uh, if any of you guys are anime fans and watched Kuroko no Basket, it looks like the zone animation that happens sort of towards the end. I don't want to spoil it. If you haven't, it's a great anime, but that's what it reminds me of with them pushing open the door. And then we have sort of the title screen here. And again, we're seeing the four. So the redhead, the, what looks like the fire mage girl with the purple hair, the princely Dimitri lookalike and this one. If I'm going to guess, this is the desert character because she has kind of the dancer garb on. This guy might be the winter area dude because he has the resemblance to the, the enemy commander guy. And these two, I'm not sure. Dimitri might be the forest, or the Dimitri look like might be the forest one, the bottom left kingdom, because he had that sort of uh, grassy thing around his head, the little tiara, which leaves this one to be sort of the top left um, more of a mountainous area kind of thing. So I think that's pretty much it for this trailer for Fire Emblem Engage. Let me know what you guys think. This was pretty much my breakdown based off what we've seen. I don't think we have any more story or gameplay details that I can go into unless I missed something. And if I missed something, let me know in the comments. Other than that, I think this video has gone on long enough. It's been almost half an hour. But yeah, that's about it. Fire Emblem content is back, I guess, for a while, and I'm pretty excited for this January one, although I'm kind of wary of the throwback mechanics. I don't know how to feel about this, honestly. It's exciting to have Fire Emblem back, but it's also like, uh, I'm not too sure. We'll see what happens. I don't want this to go on for too long. I will catch you guys in another video very, very soon. Peace.